Good evening, Uganda. Welcome to this special edition of On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. Tonight, my guest is a Maverick General, a man who attended a prestigious military college, Fort Leavenworth in a council in the United States. He's been a Bush War hero. He's been a district chairperson. He's a man who never misses his words. I'm at the home of Brigadier General Kasiri Gwanga. Brigadier General, welcome to the show. You are on the spot. Thank you. How are you doing these days? I'm okay. Uh -huh. The last time we had about you, for those who view this show, there was talk that you were sick. So we're happy to see you. You have bounced back and good health. In fact, some people even said that uh, the Brigadier had passed on. Yeah, that's the fun of life. But I'm back. I went sick for some time. It happens to anybody. And it happened to me. But I'm back in, on form. No problem with me. You had to be traveled out of the Uganda to, for, for treatment? Yeah, for a good checkup. Because I don't, I don't usually go sick. People were really surprised. I was even surprised myself. So they had to recheck again. Because I'm, I'm precious to a lot of people, even yourself. I'm sure you were worried. I was worried. Brigadier General, when you were aware and when you were sick, it was during that time when Uganda was deciding uh, to go to the election and elect a new set of leaders for the next five years, these five years that we started. So what has been your impression of the whole electoral process and the elections after? You know what? You want me to be straightforward on this one? You guys, you are amusing. Because I've seen a lot in this country. I've been there, I've seen it all. But when I see your wrangles, I just get amused. I don't really see what you're up to because you go into politics and you're talking nonsense. Complete nonsense. Because I was watching, I knew they are going to have some problem, these ones here. You are not focused on exactly what the world is all about. But you know what? People who are involved in the politics of this country are fellow generals, most of them, like you. Generals, generals, so okay. Are these the generals the moment you want to go in. These are form of Bush war heroes. The moment you get involved in silly things, we part company. Right now, we don't need politics. And I told the president, before they, they reintroduced these parties, I told, the, I told him these guys are not ready for parties yet. They are not ready, you've got to read it. To take, let's take them on another 10 years. Just leading them by merit. Let them lead each other, each other by merit. But when you get so them... So, Brigadier General, are you saying your colleagues in the military who are now in politics are engaging in something that you have called exactly, silly? Exactly, exactly. Some of them even... Go, silly? Exactly. Those are silly games. Look at the social situation now in the country. Look at your economy. Look at the corruption. No one talks about agriculture. You are just venturing into things. Now I just had people complaining about these members of parliament, the new members of parliament. That they, don't, they cannot even address the, the, the August House. They find it hard. I don't pity them. You know what you don't know, you people? Practice makes perfect. Most of these guys don't practice English. I've not been practicing that language. They're just getting back to form. But you have not given them even a chance. The only person I have I've seen working right now in this 10th parliament, you call it 10th parliament? Yeah. I've seen this man, Katuntu. Abdul Katuntu? Yeah, Abdul Katuntu. On this case of this lady who talked about goats and, and what? The Honorable Margaret Muhanga. Yeah, that one. Katuntu went after her. They, went, they really went after her. And I understand they have restored it, the, the title. That is something good. Now I don't know what, who they are going after. UNRWA. UNRWA has got a problem. Now they are touching, they are touching. But the, the, the most sensitive thing they should think about is agriculture. You don't have food. But, but you see, at the beginning of this discussion, you said you actually do not believe that we could even have multi-party politics. Yeah. And, this, and that parliament you can't see today. That parliament today, you seem to, to loud. 
is a product of multi-party politics. Excuse me, excuse me. You cannot tell me what to like and not to, not, not to like and not to like. I'm telling you I don't like the way you people are running things here. Because I'm part and parcel. There is no discipline here. You don't respect people. You don't respect the president. You don't respect his appointees. The whole thing has gone berserk. So you would rather we have a dictator? A benevolent dictator? You need carrot and stick once in a while. What is that? You know what I'm talking about. Carrot and stick, you want to tell so me? So people should be beaten like General Kaiura? No, the that, day, don't do it that crude, crude way. Giving them whips No, there the are some ways of doing things. Not just doing it when you know this is a, a global village. Now Kaiura is on, on a hook because of that little exercise. He could have done it otherwise. And by the way, I had an idea. If they could only arrest those goons, because they call them goons, and I think they are goons, the way they behave, if they can just collect them together and take them into some camps and give them some work, pay them salary. Sir, the people who we are beating Wanainchi are not goons. These are, these are police officers. I'm trained. not a policeman. I've so, never been a policeman. I cannot talk for the policemen. If they are, they are told to beat people like that, I'm not going to talk for policemen. There's General Kaihura. He's leading the police. You can put it on the carpet. So who are, who, who are you saying? Did you see an armed man the, beating are, someone? Who are the goons in this case? The goons who are being beaten. What are you doing on the road shouting at people, abusing, throwing stones? They're going to kick your butt. So you got it wrong, sir, because I got nobody, it was, wrong. nobody was throwing stones. Oh, then my eyes. Sometimes, as you see, my eyes, I'm getting old. Maybe I saw, I saw something wrong. But there I was thought, nobody throwing stones. In fact, the people who beat up Wanainchi were policemen. You and me know, Mr. Kamara. Who were even taken for questioning Mr. Kamara, the police standards unit. Mr. Kamara, you and me can really tell what exactly was going on in there. That was not a nice properly demonstrating people or people who are you know welcoming their what their hero you know you don't have to shout to these motorcycles itself they are driving them around blocking the road there are other people who are using there are other people using the road what about them do you think about it and what do you expect these policemen to do they also lose temper they are young and you, do you know where they recruit them from Excuse from Uganda? Uganda. From where? Which part of Uganda? Some are from Katanga. I'm telling you, their background, some are from Kasokoso. They're from everywhere. So you don't want to tell me that because they are putting on that uniform, it changes them, all of a sudden they get changed. So in your view, Katanga and Kasokoso is a hotbed of, of yeah, the, Not only that one, there are a lot of hotbeds around here. I know Kampala, you know Kampala. I've grown up here. There are some parts of Kampala where you cannot even walk, but where I can walk. So I know what I'm talking about. We are not dealing with, with simple people. We are dealing with people who are determined, who are being, you know, pushed on to do funny, funny, righteous things. And that's where I, I say, people who deal with such people, I pity them. Let, let us go back on the issues uh, now affecting our country politically. You are colleagues. Economy. Yes, but let me let me take you. No, to no, your no, colleagues. no. Don't go sideways. That that is where you people go wrong. What the problem here is the economy. Yes, the economy. Your colleagues who have aspired to lead have been in the army. Uh, people like uh, Colonel Kiza Besije. We are people from like different. Generous, by the way, we are from yes, different backgrounds. Yes, but you have all served. But military. you have all served in the uniform. They found me in you uniform. Have all, you have all put on a Ugandan uniform. Exactly. My background don't allow me to engage in, in politics. That's what they told me. Me, I'm a soldier. Period. I'm a number. Them, their way of, of life, the way they started, you know, playing with guns, allow it. They, they, they have the political background that took them the bush. Not so. Is it fair that they, they have, like politics? The, is it right that they, every time they speak or express themselves, they are incarcerated? They are locked How? up. Locked up. The way the, the approach is wrong. The moment you you serve in the military, even if you leave the military, like basically left the military, you automatically in, you go into the reserve. So you have to, to have that, that discipline. 
you remain with it. Don't just go on shouting things just like that. Even swearing yourself as a president. All those games you are playing are a little bit annoying. That's why you get in problems, you guys. Are you annoyed with your colleagues in the former colleagues in the army? Annoyed how? You are putting words in You, you in my just mouth. say that the things he says or does are annoying. Yeah, they annoy, they annoy me being what, what I am. I'm not putting words in your mouth, sir. Yeah. This is what you've just said. Being Kasiri Gwanga, with my background, I saw BCJ when I found them in the bush. I'd already served in the army for more than eight years. I know what a disciplined officer should, how, how he should behave. Even if you have left the army, you've got to be a, he's a colonel, by the way. The moment you were colonel, you put on a gadget, a red one, you change. But it changed in, into the worst. You don't shout at the president who was your command in chief. You make insinuations which really belittle him. That someone annoys us, especially me. But me, I just look on and move on. The you. two of them are retired I mean, officers. The two of them have decided to join politics. So, uh, criticizing each, each other, is the nature of the game. You are now putting me in a hot spot. Those are two adult people. They serve together. One recruited the other. I found them working together. I joined them. I don't know what their background is all about. I don't know what happened in between. Because we never, in, we were never in combat together. I found them. I joined them. And we captured the city, the government. But I really don't know what started them off. Because, who promoted Bessie? You can answer that question. He's a fellow military officer like Exactly. You. He knew his capabilities. That's, what he, that's why he made him what he is. Now the capabilities are coming out. Maybe he made a mistake. So now, in, in this army that you served sure. for quite some time and, 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 and you're very passionate about, mm -hmm. of recent we have seen shootings in the barracks, including a shooting just at the backyard here, where you are. Yeah, that one you, I talked what, about. What is, what's going wrong? Guns are so loose. Everyone walking with a machine gun. These are killing machines. A private soldier sleeping with a gun in a uniport for what? Guarding himself and his wife? He just goes in a bar, gets drunk, come back and picks up a weapon, go kill people. Take away the weapons. Take, put them in the armor. In case of anything, someone goes and sign a gun. Go do your work, bring it back. Only officers. In the army I used to serve in two. Eh? Only officer, the commissioned officer, would have a pistol. Like you do have one there? Ah, ah this is a knife. I don't okay, need a okay. pistol. This is my knife. So, when you see guns loose, like you find these LODs walking in the village, rural areas, one person with a machine gun loaded. What the hell? So now you have seen them coming out shooting at each other. Someone goes out, get drunk, and start quarreling with his wife over money for food. And he takes out a Kalashnikov and kills her. In over coins, blood. over coins. Over coins. So take away the guns. I've been telling my superiors, take away these guns from these young ones. They cannot control guns. So is there something lacking in the training? I think there's there something lacking in the discipline. It was something which started after 1979 when the Tanzanians you know, took over here. That's when the guns got out of, you know, it's, it's all like a gin out of the bottle. Putting it back is also a problem. Guns went loose in 1979. Since then, people used to have weapons with them. So what do you mean it was started by the Tanzanians? Is that because you found yourself in a collusion course with the Tanzanian no, army? No, no, because no, 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 at no, one no. time you were locked up. Yeah, I surrendered. When they defeated me, I, 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 I mean, the... Geneva Convention, what do you do? And they took me away. What, what happened You're behind me? You're a prisoner of war. Sure. What, and I was away for 897 days. In those 897 days, things changed. The gin went out of the bottle. Guns went loose on the streets. So what do I have to do with that one? I, I don't have nothing against the Tanzanians, but I'm telling you that guns started going out of the armor into even severe hands, and those who, which were picked. Why do you think people went for this Muchaka Michaka so fast? Can you really, do you think, what, why do you think they went for Muchaka Michaka? You know, to demystify the gun? Because they had picked a lot of guns during the, these two wars. 
So they wanted to learn how to use them. The first thing we should have done when we came in, we we'll start looking for guns, one by one. But sir, the people who are shooting are not civilians. The people who are shooting are those who are supposed to have guns. People act, the death was happening in the barracks. And, and, and we were wondering whether it's an, a, a discipline issue, it's a leadership issue, it, 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 is it a training issue? Because you are a veteran of the Ugandan army. Now when we go really deep into these army issues, I sometimes start pulling back. I've not been training these soldiers for the last 10 years. I don't really know what's happening in these training wings. But I just try to tell you what I know should be done and should have been done earlier is taking away guns from private soldiers, even senior issues. Put the guns back in the armor. Otherwise, you are going. This is not the first incident. There's a man I had who was drinking near Nakasero. There's a bar in Nakasero who also went home and picked up a weapon, came back and slaughtered people. It's been happening all around. And not only the army, even the police, even the security corps. There are so many guns in, you know, funny, funny hands. That's the problem we have. And you are going to have it with you. Guns are all over the place, even all over the world. You, you, you always struggle. I mean, you always struggle. Don't you see men at the airport, like in Paris, or London, you find paper arms. These days, guns are the norm. Yeah, if they are in the hands of those who should have them, that's okay. But if they are in the hands of those who should have them, and they are misusing them... That is them, what we should that's, address that's now. That's what they are addressing now. I'm sure it's being addressed. Lessons have been learned now. Brigadier General Kassiri Gwanga, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're still tuned to On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara and uh, my guest tonight, or should I even say I am a guest to Brigadier General Kassiri Gwanga because we are coming to you from his home in Makindia. Brigadier General, the robberies have become enormous in this country. And sometimes uh, people choose, again, those who should be guarding us to get involved in the robberies. I choose them of getting involved in this. I don't think I can really comment on that. You know, security of Kampala district is not under me. But me, my area of operation, I don't have to see much. I don't see much robbery there. But right now in Kampala, the whole place is awash with guns, like, you know. And everyone, wherever there is a gun committing a crime, definitely they think they are informed men who are doing it. But you find, you have what people call the Chifesi, I don't know who the chief face is, but then I hear about someone who was telling me about a gentleman. To me, he doesn't look sinister, but what they talk about him is a little bit sinister. He's a man called Chitata. He has a police at home guarding him. He has a rifle in this vehicle with a pistol. How does a man like Chitata get a rifle? So those are some of the people who have weapons. And anyway, when, the moment they license guns, people buy guns and I find a lot of people even flashing them in bars. So about robberies in Kampala, I don't think you should really blame it on the police or informed men that a lot of people have got guns in town. We don't even know where they get them from. Around the time when you were sick, Brigadier General, we saw some episodes where uh, how many people could even dare to take on uh, a, a UPDF detach in, in Gulu, take on a police station in the middle of Gulu town, broad daylight, and yet we are like... I mean, it's uh, really to... Yet those security installations were really feared. But some people were arrested. I saw some guys in court over that incident. These days you can never wonder about such incidents. They're not new. They're new. Maybe they're new to you, but you can see like in Somalia and then the security in the north. You know, we had a war for, for almost 20 years. So you've got a lot of people, some of them left the bush and came back home. Some of them were disgruntled. Because me, I grew up in the northern region. I've got a lot of friends. So they sometimes come here, they are, they are disgruntled. They say they are being 
sort of being left out. So you have those cases. So no wonder you find such incidences. But I don't, I'm not worried about them. Really. You know, what is, I don't know what is special about Brigadier General Kassiri Gwanga because you make political statements. You sometimes stand and criticize. Yeah. But you are never taken to jail. Some people say, because you speak the language of the day that supports the regime, not necessarily to Yeah, I walk the talk. I brought in this regime. I came blasting bombs here. So I think I, have, I still have that right to steer you somewhere where you go wrong. I say, maybe this is wrong, maybe this is right. But I'm not very vocal. I just do my things. You never see me in public places or where I don't. Whenever I came out, it's you, in fact, it's you guys who come at me. Now you are here, you are shooting, you know, arrows, arrows, arrows. I've got to respond. But there's nothing much about General Kassiego. I just live my free life. So you, when you just, you came blasting bombs in Kampala, mm. and quite some people have said you actually even grabbed the property, the house where we are in here. That's and rubbish. And nobody has ever evicted you. That's rubbish. That's rubbish. That's, that, that's the problem with you, the press. Now you have come here, you have brought up that issue, that issue was finished. I got the land, I got my lease, I got my title. Again, you are bringing it back. No, no, sir, you said you... No, 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 Mr. Kamara. Blasting bombs in Kampala. Blasting bombs, yes, I was... Picking booty as well. What, what booty? booty? What did you have? You had nothing. We've made you what you are. We brought every... <laughs> We've made you what was you are. Was this part of the war booty? Which war booty? This is a house. Everyone who has got a house in there, I'm a person who has a house in Kampala, is it a war booty? Why do you think it's a war booty? I'm asking you. No, I'm asking you also, why do you think it's a war booty? Have they told you I'm a thief or I've been stealing people's property since so, I came in? So the controversy came from where? I don't know about the controversy. So what is the insinuation? Someone sent you to ask about the house again? No, because you said cut you the came crap, <laughs> cut the crap, cut you the said crap. You came because uh, now, where, uh, yeah, I told you, you, you told, you, you were asking what about Kasiye Gwanga, and I also wonder about you guys, because you don't understand me. A lot of people don't know Kasiye Gwanga by the way. You find a lot of people speaking a lot of things about Kasiye Gwanga, but you don't know Kasiye Gwanga. You, you really don't know me, and I'm happy about that. I don't want to be known. I keep my distance. Have you ever seen me in a public place? Have you ever seen me in Syria? I've heard you speak in, on different fora. At one point, uh, with all respect, you stated that corrupt officials should be shot dead in a public square. Go to China and find out what they're doing to them. The moment you take a billion, you should be shot. Period. What are you going to do with, the, with the, a billion? What are you going to do with one billion? Can you tell me, Mr. Kamara, now I give you a billion. Are you really going to eat that man and finish it? So why do you go to, you see everything, everyone is really scrapping for something to eat. And you take a billion, to, now they're talking about four trillion. Yeah, we are talking about, me I'm always on the tube. They are talking about four trillion. Where is the four trillion for good sake? That's a lot of money. How many millions of dollars? So you think for those who are accused of stealing, if they are found guilty, they should be taken to the Constitution Square? Not the Constitution. That, they don't shoot people at the Constitution. They can be hanged. What are we talking about here? Don't shoot them, hang them. Who are you to steal, to steal a billion? Who are you anyway? You're just you, Kasiye Gwanga, you're still two billion. Why should you walk free? If they can prove. We, by the way, the problem here, you always fail to really come up with enough evidence to pin down people. It's all hearsay, rumors, and they are going to throw you out of court when you go with your cases. Some, some of them have been thrown out of court because there is no proper evidence. These things are done in groups. Maybe some of your people also are also involved. A lot of people are involved in this scam. So no one wants to, no one wants to point, pinpoint each, each other. So what are we doing about it? That's where your problem is. Instead of going after such something like that, 
you find yourself in politics, in funny, funny things, which doesn't even matter. Now, you know the manifesto of the president? You read it properly? The steady progress, sir. Yeah, even the other one. What was the, what were the cardinal points in that man, man manifesto? Your cardinal points, what did you pick up? Well, he, he, he talked many things, Tra transformation, uh, prosperity for all. Yeah, this is an agricultural country, no? But if, he, if you believe this is an agricultural country, hey. and the, ours is an agricultural-led economy, how much do you put into agriculture? That's what you should be asking these people in parliament. They have not even talked about the manifesto. The other ninth parliament, the president will emphasize a lot on mechanization and irrigation. Even this manifesto is emphasizing. But you know, you are his political advisor in Buganda. I'm not a political advisor, I'm a security advisor. I don't deal in politics. You are his advisor in Buganda? Yeah, I tell him whatever is going on. And, and, on and, if, and, and if agriculture is the big thing, mm. like you believe it's a big thing, yeah. then it should be reflected in the kind of money they are putting in the budget for agriculture. Yeah, if they put it about three percent, they have tried to. Then it's not a priority. They're a little bit. They got a little bit suspicious how the money is being handled, especially by the local government. So I think they are coming up. With, I don't know how they are going to do it, but I think this next interview you should you should come to my place, come David, and see what we are trying to do. What I'm trying to do to show you how you can go about this agricultural issue. That's what I think. I will invite you. You see how we should do it. Because you people, so we talk about agriculture, but people here don't know nothing much, not much about it. They know how to grow matoke, how to grow maize, how to grow the sweet banana, sweet potatoes, maybe tomato, a few tomatoes, they know about it. But when you talk about, when you go to Nakase, you find a lot of stuff. I don't even know who, who grows them. I'm looking for those people. Those are things which are really now going on the market. We can talk about coffee, that is commercial. We can talk about cotton. But there are some new things now we should go, be going into for. Those which, which we can export to Europe, they need them fruits, especially. They, they, they like our fruits. Fish farming. Our fish is special. They tell you about it. Even in Europe, they like it. Go after these guys who are fishing illegally, doing it in a funny way, you know, fishing these young ones. They should go after that lake and clean it up. Those are the things we should set our minds to. do so. keg fishing. Huh? And do keg fishing. Yeah, and do keg fishing. They, when the president talked about it here, uh, people said he's selling the lake. I was very, very surprised. By then, the minister of fishery was on the river She never came out to explain it properly. But now when you see people, the way they go, they're doing fish farming now, if they can encourage them. The leaders, go after these leaders, especially the members of parliament. Okay, they always talk about... Uh, Bakula Mateka, making laws. Are they doing, every session they go in there, they talk about, you know, coming up with new bills. They should go back. When they I understand they're always fighting for this per diem, they want to go out, travel out. They should get going, lobby for help. Get some people to come in here. The other time when this Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu came here, I thought something would come out of it. I haven't heard about it. But I think if we get the Jews here, agriculture will. So what, what, what are, at, at your level in, in what you call Camp David, what are you doing exactly? You see it there, I cannot explain it. You see it there, uh, when you come in there. Because what I've done, I'm getting young men from different parts of the country, from the east, from the north. They come in here and they learn what I'm trying to, you know, come up with, but I can't try to explain it here. It's not a school. But there they, they are learning and they go back, the others come, they learn, they go back. Maybe one day, 
Okay, let, let, let's, uh, Brigadier General, let's go back to the issues probably which you're, you're more familiar with. Mm. Um, you know, our neighbors in the north, South Sudan, have been having problems. And uh, this time around, the UPDF or the Ugandan government decided not to intervene. Uh, we think that was a good move? Yeah, it was a good move. Those people will be fighting until I don't know how many years to come. When I went there in 1972, I fought in Anyanya 1. They used to spill over and we pushed them back. That was Lagu. In 1972? 1972, I was there. The Uganda Army? Yes. Under Idi Amin? Under Idi Amin. I was right on the border, Jali, after Moyo. Our company, where we had Chali company. So I know all about those people. They'll be fighting, 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 fighting. So I don't have nothing much to say about them. Yeah, but uh, it's the only country where the trade uh, between us and, the, and any other nation is in, in our favor. The trade balance is in our favor. So we have a lot of interest in that country. You know, I don't, I don't go in, in trade. I go into agriculture, be producing food. If they buy it, I'll, if they don't buy it, if, I'll if, sell it somewhere. Brigadier General, if that market in South Sudan is worth $400 million a year, then where, that is something... I, I don't see it. That's something big. I don't see it here. Where does it go? They've been trading with South Sudan for how many years now? Since when? Since CPA 2005. Since the signing of the CPA. It's now 11 years. Where is the money? Where is the money? You say we have lost that what? that market. But what, what, what are we talking about here? But so that maybe, regional geopolitics, in geopolitics I'm not dealing in that one. I don't know much about them because I was there a, a long, long time back. But all I know, all I know, they will be fighting, fighting and fighting. And it is better uh, we, Uganda stays away from it. Sure. Sure. Even when, a house, you shouldn't be even when your there. neighbor's house is on fire, you stay away. Okay, I don't know neighbor's house. I don't know how neighborly they are. I understand they are torturing our people inside Juba. I've had a lot of complaints from these traders. They say they kill them, they waylay them on the way, ambush them, steal their goods. So what kind of neighbors are those? We just assist them. I see them roaming here in Kampala. So... We have been involved in many ventures in the region, in Central African Republic, in, in South Sudan. In, and that's in, why we in are the Somalia. safest place you can relax in Central and East Africa. This is where you can really feel okay. Better than even Nairobi. We have seen these Americans running up and down, jogging. You find those people jogging in Nairobi, they will cut off his hand and take his watch. But here, have you ever seen someone burning an American flag? Burning an American flag? No. Al Shabaab came and tried us. Then he found out we don't have to go after Uganda. I think we are relatively okay because of our past deeds. Let me ask you something I've just remembered. And uh, this concern for a man like you who has served in the army for decades, mm. and uh, you are now at the rank of a brigadier. But there are some of those people who, when you started serving, were actually in diapers or not even yet born, but now are even a rank ahead of you. That's what, what's that got to do with me? The world is moving on. When I was in the army, in, I mean, the army, I was shooting bombs using a compass and a protractor. Today they are using GPS. You want me to go back to school and start learning about GPS? And for what? Those who, 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 who are in their bars, I can take them to battle. That's my job now. That's why I went to Leavenworth. I sit down, I say, you are going to do it like this, and this is the, this is the intent of the government. And I sit back and watch. So what's wrong with that? What do I, what do I want now? There are some of your colleagues who are frustrated that uh, how come the guy who was in diapers when I'm in the bush is now Those are commander? not professionals. I'm a professional. I'm married to the army. I've got a ring. Why should you worry about someone's rank? 
is doing his own job and you got your own job. Do, you, do yours properly. And the world moves on. When you see someone interested in ranks, especially I wonder about you, civilian. You talk a lot about civilian, military ranks. What do you want? Someone asked you, I want to join the army. When am I going to be a captain? Idiot. Now they say, you know, this situation is about this young general, this President uh, Seven his son. Brigadier General Mohosi. Major hey, General Mohosi. Major General Mohosi. What's the problem? How old is he? He's over 40, isn't he? He should be. Yeah. Sure. You find Major Generals in the British Army, young ones. Who's been there? He's worked the army. He's a Major General. So? What kind of legacy will that institute, institution leave? Which institution? The institution of the army, you think, in the region? The institution, the army is not supposed to go away. You cannot say it's an institution that goes away. The whole thing started in 1979, and it caused problems. Like, it has caused the American problems in the Middle East. You know, uh, Saddam went after Kuwait. Mm -hmm. That was my class, class 90. So we discussed it, and I told them one thing. When you, when you fight Saddam, don't disband the army. That was my suggestion. Here, when the Tanzanians took over, they disbanded Amin's army, and trouble started up to today. So the inspiration has just... The army is supposed to be there. You see this number? 1775. That is when the American army started. It's yeah. there today. It never goes away. You politicians can go. You, you pride in yourself in saying you're purely a military man and you're just a number. I'm just a number. Yeah, I'm just a number. And you know, me, I'm fun. I've got two numbers. I've got the other Uganda number. 17341. When you go to Geneva and you, the Red Cross, you ask for me, you get that number there. Then I've got this number. So I've got two. I'm a legend. Not so. Is it the training at Fort Leavenworth in a council that makes you who you are and distinguishes you from the other military officers? Yeah, there when you graduate, the President of the United States, you know, you get a book, a big book, to show you, but they call it the bear. One day I'll show it to you. That book lists all the officers who have attended that particular year. Because when you, when you ask me, I'll just tell you I'm class 90. That's how we say it. Automatically, someone will know that I graduated 90. Now, that book, the first letter in the book is from the President of the United States of America. At the end of the letter, they say, you are now the future leaders of the world. So when you graduate from Leavenworth, you learn a lot. You learn to be a politician, you learn to be a leader. They teach you responsibility, to be a responsible person, to yourself and to those you lead. And when you, the, how they, you know, the Okwan is in that college, they say, this is going to be the best year in your life. And it's really the best year you can have in life. Uh, Brigadier, you seem to have lived a life always in solitude, alone, in your house. Um, you know, uh, you never hear, of, uh, with all respect, of, of Mrs. Kassiri and... I never talk about my family. I've got children, I've got my wife. We live in a funny way. We live in different countries. We live, we live here. Yeah, like different people. countries. We don't put our eggs in one basket. She lives okay. I live okay. She comes here. She sees me. She goes back. The kids are there. They're going to school. Some of them are graduating. We're happy. This Christmas, I'll be going. Have my Christmas there. Relax with my kids. 
some of the some of them are coming back to stay to work with me because I'm retiring from the army. This is the best country to live in. How come that your family does not has not chosen to live in the best country in the world? That's what you think. You think it's best it can be best to you, not to us. So you who sacrificed for this country, yeah, still think this is not the best place for your family to be? Yeah, the way the world is rolling on. I don't think my children should grow up here. They can always come back and stay here. But you know they have got to be at par with the rest. But I don't think your children here are at par. You see with your Bonaba Some, you are always castigating it. Not so. You know, they, you have a, a very um unique style that, that you, you give and take away. The, the same government you allowed in the same measure you criticize it so heavily. So sometimes I've, I've, I've failed to understand where you, you really are standing. I also failed to understand my father. I was very hard working. But whenever I did something wrong, he could really punish me more than he punished the others. I didn't know, I knew later. He told me later. And he asked me a question, he said, you see who you are today? As simple as that. So, may I don't love this government out of whatever. It's the one I have. In case of anything, going basak here, I know what can happen next. So I'd rather have, I, I, I'd rather have it. When it goes, I say, come back here. Come back here. We've got something. We've got a vision. Let me take you to and what I'm going to call uncharted waters because uh, uh, when General Aronda died, he, he, you know, most of us, and I'm sure even you, were sad. Mm. But you seem to have suggested that uh, probably there should be deeper investigation. And, and, and I think you're quoted saying you, you could have a hint of what could have happened. Got a hint on what could have, have happened. General Aronda died. Let him rest in peace. Let his family relax. He died. I stand by my word. He was killed. By who, sir? They took him into immigration. Those people in immigration killed him. Before, that, before he died, he came here. And we had the chat. So when he died, I knew. That's that. Brigadier General Kassiri Gwanga, what is going to be your concluding remark on the short night? I'm worried, I'm worried about the economy. I don't know what the government is going to do about it. We should go mechanized. We should go after the water we have. We've got fresh water, Lake Victoria. Let's make canals go inside and we go irrigation, otherwise we have a problem, a big problem. The population is growing, growing, and people are not eating good. You know, most of these kids, when they don't eat good when they are young, their brains don't do well in school. I'm worried about that. And lastly, in this very interview, you have made uh, quite substantial uh, statements, including um, uh, an allegation an allegation that uh, some people, including a general, could have been killed. And, 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 but some one people, point, I don't know about the others. Uh, well, the, the general we talked about, that, that one day you could be asked to substantiate. I'll tell them what I've told you. Because definitely he told me. If you're going to wake him up and ask him about it, okay, me, he told me. I'm not telling a lie. You don't know 
Do you don't know me to tell lies, do you? He told me, and I've told you what he told me, and he died. Twenty twenty one is almost four years away, and uh, our constitution has an age limit. Uh, you think the age limit should stay in the constitution? What age limit? That if you are 75, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be president of Uganda. Who told you what is Uganda all about? Uganda. That someone cannot lead Uganda when he's over 75. What are we talking about here? We're talking about the constitution. The constitution, okay. We've been, you've been you know, changing those constitu that constitution several times. We can always change it and get out that age limit. It's just a little bit silly. You know, Ronald Reagan? Former United States president. Yeah. Do you know how old he was when he took over America? He was in his 70s. He was 74 years old. And you know who brought down the, uh, the Berlin Wall? And you know Berlin Wall? The Cold War. Yeah. Eh? The man was, was over 74. And they shot him and he came back and did his thing. Major experiment we had about them. He made America beef again. But, uh, but our president said in an interview actually with me that, that after 75, it is scientific, you don't have enough vigor. Uh, what science is he talking about? I understand he, he did political science. Is he going to biology stuff to talk about anatomy of the past? I don't think he's, he's got that right. So you'd support, you would support the idea of a removal yeah. of that yeah. article? Because I'm telling you, I'm not saying it because I'm on air or I'm on, on your show. I don't trust you people, I trust President Museveni. And when I say I don't trust you, believe me, I don't trust you. Because I know you. I've been with you when we captured power here in 1986. We've been together, I've been seeing you. I've seen all these ministers come and go. These politicians come and go. I know their background. So I'd rather be with that man for some time. Good dear General Kasiri Gwanga, thank you very much. Thank you. Very for being on the show. Thank you. Good night. And probably next time we come, we'll be at Camp David. Camp David. I want you there. Good night. Thank you. And God bless you, Uganda. You've had the man who speaks without mincing his words. Today, he's made quite some statements that are heavy, but those are his words, and uh, he can defend his words. He can substantiate them. Trained at Fort Leavenworth, Brigadier Kasiri Gwanga is a soldier with a difference. Good night. <laughs>